As you may or may not know, predictive programming has shown as the start date of the worldwide pandemic that commenced on March 11, 2020, when the World Health Organization declared a global emergency that has impacted everyone's daily lives ever since. This date, of course, was seen in this cryptic video that was released almost a decade ago. In this scene, a number is displayed containing not only the start date of the pandemic, but two eclipses that followed, and also pointing to the date on which the war between Russia and Ukraine would start. When we consider this number as shown in this scene, you can see 11 and 3, which was the date on which the pandemic was declared a global emergency marking the start of lockdowns and setting up the mandates with which people were expected to submit their bodies to unknown substances that have never been used in humans before. The next two numbers mark the dates of two eclipses that followed this announcement, the solar eclipse on June 21st and the lunar eclipse on July 4th of the same year. This is then followed by the number 600, and if you add 600 days to the lunar eclipse of July 4th, you arrive at the star date of the Russia-Ukraine war on February 24th, 2022. I've also shown in previous videos how the book of Daniel points to the events that have occurred during this period and shows us exactly when this time will end and we read about this in Daniel 12. Please note that the word sacrifice which I have struck through does not appear in the Hebrew and was added by translators of the King James Bible. And I heard but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand." And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth, and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. We know that the entire world's daily lives were changed on March 11th, 2020. And if we add 1,290 days to that date, we arrive at September 22nd of 2023. September 22nd and 23rd are dates that have been most prominent in predictive programming, and I have posted examples of this in this video, if you have not seen it yet. Daniel 12 is also pointing to November 6th of 2023 for those who wait and who will receive a blessing. Predictive programming has clearly shown us how the media would be used to cause fear in those who are unable to think for themselves and who would submit to the mandates that were imposed by those who serve the enemy and who impose his agenda on the population. Not only this, but we have also been shown how the Super Bowl of 2023 marked the date on which the poisoning of the world would begin via toxic train derailments that is speeding up the process with which the environment is rendered uninhabitable and humanity's numbers are lowered. I have covered this in several of my previous videos for those who may not have seen this yet. Something that I came across recently are two videos by John from Theology Ed, in which he discussed this number that appeared in the movie Knowing from 2009. I will leave links in the description if you would like to view them. What is interesting is that these numbers would seem to be pointing to May 15th of 2023, and the 445 or 445 that follows this date would seem to connect this date to the number sequence that was shown in the Be Ready video. If one adds 445 days to the start of the Russia-Ukraine war, or to the 600 that is shown in this clip, it takes you to exactly May 15th of 2023 which would mark this day as a very important date for some notable event, at least from the enemy's perspective. And knowing their track record, we can certainly expect something significant to happen. All of this, of course, shown to us in plain sight. The question is then, how does this date fit in with the expectation of those who are watching for the return of our Heavenly Bridegroom, especially when one considers the application of Second Passover, which was instituted by God for those who were defiled by dead bodies and for those who were on long journeys. When I thought about this, I was immediately reminded of a passage in the book of Jubilees, 
in which it is explained that Israel would be keeping their feasts ten days too early. Before I continue, I know that there will be many who will say that the book of Jubilees is not part of the Bible, so we should not pay any attention to what is written in it. My approach to this is that if the Bible speaks about extra-biblical books known to us as the Apocrypha, then we should probably understand why it refers to them and also consider the information contained in these books. In my studies I have discovered that they provide a lot of detail on matters that are only touched on in the books that were included in the Bible. The book of Jasher, for instance, is referred to twice in the books of Joshua and 2 Samuel and contains a lot of detail that is not found in the Bible. For instance, it explains the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah in great detail, something that is not shared in the Genesis account. It shows us how Nimrod treated Abraham in the same manner as Nebuchadnezzar treated Daniel's three friends when he threw them into the furnace, confirming what we read in Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9 and 3 verse 14 to 15, where it is stated that God requires patterns that repeat as events are playing out throughout history. In the book of Enoch, a lot more detail concerning the interactions between the angelic beings known as the Watchers and the humans are provided, which are only touched on briefly in Genesis 6. And without this extra detail, the subject matter of Genesis 6 has been subject to all kinds of interpretations that make no sense, in light of the detail provided in the Apocrypha. I am not saying that we should treat the Apocrypha in exactly the same way as God's Word, but in my opinion there is a lot of benefit in studying the details that are provided in these books which helps one to obtain a deeper insight into what is written in the Bible. Coming back to second Passover then, and the date on which this should be celebrated, in Isaiah 1 we read the following. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. Once again we have a matter that is addressed in the Bible, but which lacks the detail as to exactly why God hates Israel's feasts. If, however, we consider what is written in the book of Jubilees, a book in which more detail on God's timing and specifically the Jubilees, Sabbaths and appointed times are provided, we find a clear reason for the statement in Isaiah 1. For I know, and from henceforth shall I declare it unto thee, and it is not of my own devising, for the book lieth written before me, and on the heavenly tables the division of days is ordained, lest they forget the feasts of the covenant, and walk according to the feasts of the Gentiles, after their error and after their ignorance. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbeth the seasons, and cometh in from year to year, ten days too soon. For this reason the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order, and make an abominable day the day of testimony, and an unclean day of feast day. And they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean, and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. Concerning Israel's calendar, they adopted elements from the Canaanites and the Babylonians into their calendar, and they adopted a new solar lunar calendar, with the moon determining their months, just as stated in the book of Jubilees. This calendar is different to the calendar that was originally given to Enoch, which is a 364-day solar calendar. It is then interesting that a lunar year is exactly 10 days shorter than the 364-day solar calendar. Israel's calendar currently shows that second Passover starts on May 5th, and it coincides with a very special lunar eclipse as well as several other amazing heavenly signs. But when we consider what is written in Isaiah 1 with additional detail from the book of Jubilees, there is a possibility that Israel's date assigned to this feast may be incorrect and it could very likely be 10 days too early according to what is explained to us in the book of Jubilees. If we combine this understanding with the image shown to us in this instance of predictive programming, the war between Russia and Ukraine would have been raging for exactly 445 days on May 15th of 2023. And this, once again, 
would point to a major world impacting event that could occur on this date and which the enemy is well aware of. When we know that May 15th may be the true second Passover date, this could be the date on which they say peace and safety and where great destruction comes over the earth and where those who have been waiting for their blessed hope could finally fall down before the feet of their bridegroom when they meet him in the air in new glorified bodies. Whatever the case may be, May 5th to May 15th is a very important period with the latter date being pointed out by the enemy and forming part of their plan through which the Antichrist will be elevated into his position as world ruler. So if May 5th and 6th passes by without major events occurring, not to mention that the coronation of King Charles will probably also have something to do with everything that is unfolding before us, do not lose hope as we know where to focus our attention. I hope this short update will bless you and that you will remain watchful in the coming days. Until next time, or until we meet in the air, God bless.